You see that guy? No, not good old Golden Balls Beckham, but the guy starring alongside him in this 2003 Pepsi commercial. The man with Beckham is, of course, Adrian Mutu. Back in 2003, Mutu was a genuine star. In some ways, he sort of was the Beckham of Romania, a top product out of the country, seen as the heir to Georgie Hadji's golden throne, married Alexandra Dinu, a model, actress, and TV presenter, fresh off of conquering Italy, and on his way to hopefully becoming one of the pearls of Roman Abramovich's Chelsea revolution, the biggest Romanian football export since the aforementioned Hadji. Jump ahead a year, and despite the flashes of brilliance that he showed in the Premier League, the downward spiral had well and truly kicked off with failed drug tests, tabloids hiring adult film actresses to try and sleep with him, and more. Thankfully though, there's a light at the end of this dark, crazy tunnel. Hey guys, welcome to Rabona TV. I'm also Adrian, and I'm looking forward to, at least through my fingers a bit, going over the crazy but also sad tale of Adrian Mutu, a player that oozed class and could have been a genuine massive star in the game, but clearly had some addiction issues that he lacked support for and was continuously misguided throughout his career. Now, I'm not going to go into all of the gory details of his hijinks. This is a football channel after all, not a celebrity tabloid, but some of it is absolutely unavoidable in the context of Mutu's career. Some of the things I have read about this man drinking blood I, I mean wow but let's get started way back at the beginning of his career and of course sources are listed below As you'll see, Mutu's time as a professional was anything but normal, and that complete lack of normality was present from the very, very beginning of his career. Mutu joined Arjes Piteshti as a youth player in 1987 when he was 9 years old, and he made his professional debut for the club when he was just 17 years old. As mentioned in the intro, that class and ability on the ball, as well as a nose for goal, no pun intended, was evident from a young age, and when Arjes were ready to cash in on their talented 19-year-old forward in 1998, a war for his signature took place in Romania amongst the biggest clubs at the time, all three of which from the capital, Bucharest, Dinamo, Stoia, and Rapid Bucharesti. However keen the other two may have been, Dinamo took their interest to the next level, apparently. Mutu's agents were Giovanni and Victor Bacali, often just referred to as the Bacali brothers. And according to Giovanni, Dinamo had a strange request. They didn't just ask for preferential treatment, they asked Giovanni to hide Mutu so that the other clubs couldn't make him any offers. As Bacali remembers it, quote, I took Mutu to my house and kept him there for 10 days until he signed a contract with Dinamo. One of the Dinamo shareholders came to my house with $700,000. He showed the notes to me, they had dust on them and had a very strange smell. He paid the money and the boy signed his contract with Dinamo. Not exactly the traditional way that a transfer goes down, right? Already at just 19, he was being referred to as the next great Romanian football player, as someone who could reach the levels and possibly eclipse those of the great Georgi Hadji. Borderline house arrest, or maybe it was kidnapping, I don't know, but there were incredible expectations, and to his credit, Mutu delivered at Dinamo Bucharest, and after playing just a season and a half with the club, he was shipped off to Italy. It was Inter Milan who signed Mutu from Dinamo Bucharesti, as the Romanian forward managed to score an incredible 25 goals in 25 matches in the first half of the 99-2000 season in Romania. Mutu joined Inter during the winter transfer window in 2000, and despite scoring an important goal in Inter's win against Milan in the Coppa Italia, his impact wasn't really felt at the Nerezzeri. That summer, he was shipped off to Verona, where in two seasons, he certainly looked like a better player than his Inter days, but his time in Italy only well and truly kicked off when he went to Parma in 2002. At Parma, Mutu would strike up an incredible partnership with none other than the player who would go on to be known as the Emperor, the Brazilian striker Adriano. For how good these two were together, it's sad to see how their respective careers panned out in the end. Parma at this time were one of the powers of Italian football, as the past decade was kind of their golden era. Two UEFA Cups and three Coppa Italia were the highlights of their trophy cabinet. 
With this success came attention from the bigger clubs and Juve taking both Turam and Buffon away from them, so they had funds to build their squad out and Adriano and Adrian, Mutu, were their targets, plucked from Fiorentina and Hellas respectively. Where Mutu was all finesse with his fine footwork and perfectly threaded passes, Adriano provided the pace, power and hold up play. They were an incredible duo. In 36 matches for Parma across all competitions, Mutu scored 22 goals and set up 12. In fact, Mutu was nominated for the Ballon d'Or that year. Year, the year in which Pavel Nedved won. So that's the level he was playing at. As Roman's fantasy football started, the Chelsea fans thought Christmas had come early. Throughout his time at Parma, back in Romania, there was a buzz about Mutsu's personal life. There was always a buzz surrounding his personal life, given how, as mentioned, he was essentially the David Beckham of Romania. And by the time he was moving to Chelsea in 2003, after just one season with Parma, it was confirmed that Mutu was going through a divorce with his then wife, Alexandra Dinu. And yes, bringing this up will make sense in a moment. While Todd Bowley has had some, let's call them exciting transfer windows, Roman Abramovich's summer of 2003 was a wild one. Hernan Crespo joining from Inter, Damian Duff coming in from Blackburn, Veron coming over from Man United, the great Claude Makélélé from Real Madrid, and of course, Adrian Mutu signed from Parma for around 22 million euros. These guys amongst other signings as well. For a first outing in the Premier League, this under Claudio Ranieri, of course, Mutu's season wasn't so bad. 10 goals and 5 assists, scoring a brilliant goal against Leicester on his debut in the Premier League, in fact scoring 4 goals in his first 3 Premier League appearances was quite the achievement, with Jimmy Floyd Hasselbank, Hernan Crespo and Eider Gojonsson as his competition in the striker position, and coupled with some of the injuries here and there that he was picking up, he definitely had it against him. However, living in a flat in West London, he became a regular of the glitzy local nightclubs as well, and nights spent drinking until the early hours became all too regular for the Romanian forward. Now, looking back on that time with a Romanian journalist back in 2020, Mutu points to how he wasn't prepared for that pressure. He spoke of how in Romania he had been given Haji's iconic number 10, how he excelled at Parma, but coming to Chelsea and playing in the bright lights with super players at the club was more than he had ever had to deal with. Plus, there was everything in his personal life where newspapers in Romania kept tabs on every single move he made and put it on display for the world. In fact, a tabloid back then even teamed up with a Romanian adult film actress, challenging her to sleep with Romanian football players, and Mutu was one of them. And without knowing, he was also filmed. I know what you're thinking, no not that, but yes, that's illegal, as well as very damaging to Mutu's reputation. A reputation that he, of course, did little to help himself and improve, especially when there was a steady stream of stories of him fleeing from cops in a car chase, as well as whispers of his party boy lifestyle were bubbling to the surface everywhere as an open secret. All of this pressure, coupled with loneliness he felt in London and going through a divorce, led to Mutu forming some bad habits. As he said in 2020, quote, At Chelsea, the patience with the players just ended. Nobody was waiting for you. You had to be 100% in the sessions. If I wasn't, Crespo was 100%. Hasselbank was 100%. Didier Drogba, who arrived a year later, was 100%. You had to manage that pressure, and at my age, I wasn't prepared. At Dinamo, I trained just a bit with that pressure, but that was not the same thing. If you're not training a player under that pressure, he does not know how to manage it when he faces it. After the pressure, the anxiety arrived for me. It was a state of anxiety. In those moments, the enthusiasm becomes mental fatigue. You are empty mentally. Physically, you are doing it, but mentally you can't gather yourself, can't motivate yourself. In these times, the player is looking for things. Well, you can guess what kind of things he's referring to. In February of 2004, with alcohol not doing the trick anymore, Mutu turned to cocaine for the first time. I have, to, I have to say this. Please don't call me arrogant because what I, I'm saying is true. I think I'm a special one. Out with Ranieri at Chelsea and in with Mourinho in the summer of 2004. However, the good man that Ranieri is, he left a complete dossier for his successor with his own thoughts on all of the players in the squad. Ranieri pointed to the fact that Mutu has the ability to be a match winner all on his own given his ridiculous talent, but there were major red flags when it came to his professionalism and how he spent his spare time. Mourinho on his first meeting with Mutu said, quote, 
When I met Adrian on his first day in preseason, it was with his two agents. I told all three I had information that the player was on cocaine. All three were laughing and saying it was a big lie. They said it was completely untrue. And so that July, Chelsea ordered Mutsu to take a drug test, and to their shock, nothing illegal showed up in the results. However, with Mutu missing many training sessions, and when he was there, often showing up late and in a terrible state, Mutu played just 49 minutes for Mourinho in the first five matches of that Premier League season. This is where the conflict ramps up. Mutu was selected for another drug test in October of 2004. Before the results were revealed, Mutu wanted to join the Romanian national team during the international break, of which Mourinho did not release him to do so, so he said that Mutu was injured. Mutu left and represented Romania anyway, against the wishes of Mourinho, and then president of FIFA, Sepp Blatter, even fought in Mutu's corner, saying that Mourinho and Chelsea had no right to try and block him from representing his national team. Well, shortly after, Chelsea made a press release saying that Mutu had tested positive for a banned substance. In about three weeks, Chelsea announced that Mutu had been dismissed from the club due to cocaine use, with his contract being scrapped. There hadn't been a hearing prior to this decision. However, given Mutu was compliant and agreed to go to rehab, the initial two-year ban that he was going to receive was reduced to just seven months, and he and Chelsea parted ways. Back before he even failed his drug test, Mutu says that he and Mourinho were clashing. As Mutu put it, quote, I have to admit that in the heat of our confrontation, I did actually threaten Mourinho about what would happen if he ever went to Romania. In a moment of total madness, I almost hit him too. But now I am calmer and I must say I have nothing against the coach. Mutu said in 2020 that he felt like he was the victim at the time, and that he bought into many conspiracy theories that Mourinho himself arranged all of these drug tests in order to get Mutu out of the club. With hindsight, however, Mutu has said that he doesn't believe any of that, and that all of the problems that he had were his own doing, and he's since spoken to Mourinho, and they're on good terms. Mutu and Chelsea would go on to have quite the crazy and seemingly never-ending legal battle as Chelsea demanded repayments from Mutu. Simon Johnson of The Athletic explained in an article back in 2020, Chelsea initially asked to be granted £22,661,641. They argued it was to cover Mutu's replacement, who they decreed to be Sean Wright Phillips, signed for Manchester City for £21 million in July 2005 plus the damage to their reputation and legal costs. In May 2008, FIFA ruled in Chelsea's favor, though the total sum Mutu was instructed to pay was lower, 13.5 million pounds. 12 years later, however, there is no indication a single penny has ever been paid. I haven't found any other mention of the legal battle between the two entities, so it was either just dropped by Chelsea quietly, a settlement was agreed upon outside of court and again, kept quiet, or there is something on the horizon still. Your guess is as good as mine and anyone else's who isn't Chelsea or Mutu. The last we heard is that Mutu still owes the club the money, so we'll see. Mutu ended up going back to Italy, and while he had a quick stint with Livorno before being passed off to Juve, too much to explain there as his departure is tied to Calciopoli, etc. He ended up signing with Fiorentina for 8 million euros. It was here where we began to see the real, or shall I say, the original Mutu again, the guy who looked like a world class player when he was with Parma. Over 143 appearances with Fiorentina, Mutu managed to score 69 goals and set up 27 as well. That's an impressive 96 goal contributions in 143 matches as he greatly endeared himself to the people of Florence. And on top of this, he was still a regular for the Romanian national team, eventually equaling the scoring record held by George Hadji, even though we can make an entire video made on his exploits and run-ins with the national team program and various head coaches. <laughs> However, before his time at Fiorentina came to an end, he had another drug problem. However, this one wasn't for cocaine or another narcotic, but came down to a complete oversight on his part. As he put it, with his mother spending some time visiting him in Florence, she left behind a few diet pills at Mutu's apartment. As someone who was said to be obsessed with his fitness and physique, Mutu ended up taking the pills, and after a match-winning brace scored against Lazio, it was announced that Mutu had tested positive for a banned substance once again. He would serve his six-month ban, get back into the Fiorentina team, but would be moved on to Cessna as there were further issues regarding Mutu, the Florence nightlife, and a fight with a waiter. 
Mutu would bounce around from Italy to France to Romania, then joining Indian Super League side Pune City, and then back to Romania again, where he would retire in 2016. In the present day, he's seemingly gone through much self-growth and looks back on his conduct when he was jumping from controversy to controversy in a much more mature light, acknowledging how all of his issues were ultimately his own fault. As a player, you can't help but look at Mutu and the talent he possessed and feel as though, as greedy football fans that we are, we were robbed from watching a brilliant player for many years. However, he's looking to set things right, this time as a manager. Surprisingly, he was given the reins of the Romania U21 team. May seem unorthodox, but given his previous exploits, perhaps Mutu is best suited to identify when a young player is heading down the wrong path. He's said to be quite the disciplinarian. Recently, in January of 2024, he took over the Cefere Kluge job in the Romanian top flight, and while there hasn't been too many matches that he has presided over, the initial signs are looking good for him. Long may it continue, and perhaps as a manager, he'll be able to right the wrongs from his playing career. Thanks for watching this video, guys, and if you want to show your appreciation for the work that was put into it, feel free to drop a like, or if you really want to help, then subscribe for more from me here at Rubone TV. Other than that, I'm Adrian, and thanks so much for spending your time with me. Ciao.